Hey friends, in our time together today, we're going to learn the chanter's tune. We'll follow our normal format. I'll share the history I found on the tune. I'll play through the tune with no ornaments in the play along the Scott section. I'll then share some thoughts on any uh, trouble spots as well as uh, some ornament ideas. This is another old tune. Edward Bunting includes it in his 1840 collection of ancient music of Ireland, uh, which means that by 1840, it was already an old tune. So here's what we know about the history of this really fun tune. That much. <laughs> I wish we knew something. Um, even historic lyrics, but, but we don't. We just know that it's a really old march. I searched and searched and found nothing definitive. If you know some information about the history of this tune that can be attributed to a source, then please add that in the comments because I struck out in my searches. The name gives us some ideas about the nature of, of this great tune. It's called the Chanter's Tune. And I'm sure you know, but in case you don't, the chanter is the, the melody pipe on, on, um, on a, a set of um, any bagpipe, uh, you know, Irish bagpipes, uh, what, whatever they might be. Um, and so, this tune was probably written as a real live march um, for people to march to, so with a set cadence, and then the melodies played on the chanter, and so that means that there'd be some cool uh, droning associated with it and some, some great drumming as well. I'm gonna share one video in the comment, in the, in the notes section that is, um, really of, it's a youth band, <laughs> and they're playing through the tune. And it's actually combined with another tune. So um, once you know how the chanter's tune goes, you'll be able to differentiate which, which is which. Um, but I, the reason I wanna share the youth tune is because they're just playing the tune, there's some ornamentation, and there's a little drumming and, um, and the kind of lead guy's doing some steps. So I, I think it's really cool. And, and I think it's a good one for us to use. That also lets us know that yes, this is often a beginner tune. It's, um, it's not hugely challenging. Um, however, it provides some different dynamics, uh, some different rhythm and cadence for us and a different style for us. And so I thought this would be a good tune for us to play. And you can experiment with it by playing it at a few different paces as, as well. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons I really like this one. I'll share uh, soon another march that is a little more challenging but you'll, you'll love equally. But this one is great for us because it provides us with some challenge and yet is easy enough for us to be able to play. And uh, <clears throat> what I want you to think about while you're playing the tune is, can I march to this thing? So um, the way I think about it is I'll get my feet going. And I might even do that in the play along the Scott section. So the tune goes bum, 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 ba -da, bum, bum, bum. And so can you think of each primary step with a march that first beat is, is um, emphasized. So as you go through this, where were you taking your steps in the march? How fast is this going? And uh, so you can experiment with that some. And, uh, but don't play at a pace that someone is not going to march to because that's the purpose of the tune. And as usual, I'll provide a link for you to download the music and tabs. So let's move into the play along the Scott section. 
So, um, one thing before I play through it, I want to give you a sense of what I mean by that walking pace. <clears throat> so, I'm going to play just a little bit of the tune, and I'm going to, I'm going to, not tap, but maybe pound one of my feet so that you get a sense of what that rhythm would be like. Okay, so there, you could just see. So if I played that faster, I'd have to pick up my cadence on the pace a little bit. And if I played it a lot faster, I'd have to go to um, a half time and take steps every fewer beats. So get a sense of that. Mess around with that yourself. So I'm going to play through it. Chanter's tune. Um, some of the versions I've found uh, have a little uh, two note step in uh, with a G, E, and then down to the D. And so it's got the, the flow of this tune in the, the first part is repeated and it has, uh, it comes to the to two D's. It's frequently, and then it steps up, back down to the D, and then it does a little twiddly bit, steps back down, twiddly bit, down to the D, and then, uh, so you'll see that as the primary theme. You'll, you'll feel that by the time we go through it. The first part is repeated, and the second part is repeated. And I'll stand so that you can see my fingers, as usual. As far as trouble spots go, I don't really see many. We're only stepping into the second octave D, so you're not doing a lot. Uh, this is going to be a, a tune where you're concerned about tone quality because you're playing the C natural and you're playing that low D quite a bit. So you're sitting on a number of notes. So how are you going to pay attention to your tone quality? Uh, work on that. Also, the other challenge I found, and this is why I kind of tap my foot a little harder, try to maintain that consistent marching cadence because we've played some other marches, but they really, you know, even Return from Fingal didn't feel all that marchy. This is the first march we've played that feels very marchy, um, to make up a word. <laughs> so, Try and play it that way. But you might have a tendency, once you get into that second part, uh, to get, to hurry. So don't. Try and keep that pace going. As far as ornaments, um, listen to what the kids of the youth band do on the link I provide, because I think that'll help. But also, as we're playing, as you're playing through this, think you're walking down to that, that, two D's frequently. That is a frequent phrase. Like we said with tunes before, 
Don't let that become monotonous. However, there's consistency to the cadence. So as you're stepping down, I'd think about ornament into the step down and then ornament into the second D. So I think uh, from the first D to the second D, that's a good roll opportunity, though you can't roll downward, so you're gonna have to do like a double cut. Um, I just there I used the, I cut with a G and then cut with my E finger. So I simulated a roll um, because you can't do a tap below the E because you wanna feel kind of that um, Piper's feel as you go through that. So listen to what the Pipers are doing, even these, these teenagers, and that'll be really helpful for us. Uh, so really not a lot of challenges. Uh, ornamentation, as usual, I'm starting to say, that's up to you. Uh, but those are a few of the things uh, that I'm thinking about. And when I play through it in our next video, um, I'll give you a sense of how I'm currently feeling about it. So anyway, that's the Chanter's tune. It uh, goes by a number of other names, but pretty similar to this. And uh, I hope you love it. It's a great tune, and it's one that will help us with a different feel of a tune. And that's why I selected this one, because it will help us grow in our expression and tone quality uh, and pacing. So anyway, until next time. This is Scott Shade. Happy Lodi whistling, my friends.